I'm Melissa Chartrand. I'm joined by Bob Nash and Lauren Walk, Director and Associate Director of the Cultural Center of Cape Cod. And I am so excited to be standing here in what is the new wing of the facility. So let's talk a little bit, uh, let's start with the Cultural Center itself, which is such a, a young facility altogether. We've, we've chatted with you many times about it, but we're already uh, expanding in the new wing. Mm -hmm. So why is that? Well, um, we're trying to uh, fill a void out there in, uh, in terms of uh, the general public, and that means kids in high school all the way up to seniors uh, that are looking for uh, more programming. Uh, we're doing some pro programming right now in the, the building proper that we have, and uh, it's somewhat uh, troublesome that um, they don't have peace and quiet, you know, there's a lot of coming and going, they block the artwork. So now we'll have a facility that can be just dedicated to arts, education, and cultural sure. events. Well, it shows how successful you open the doors and it's just never stopped. It is a revolving door, isn't it, Lauren? Yeah, when I started here three months after they opened, I kept hearing um, that Bob had said, when the community got together and decided to do this. If we build it, they will come. And he was absolutely right. Um, there was, I think, some trepida trepidation early on that they had this beautiful facility, but what were they gonna do in it? Well, because the philosophy is to react to community need, there's never been an issue. We opened the doors, people came and said, can we do this, can we do that, can we play here, can we do this play? Whatever it was they asked for, if it was within the mission, which is fairly broad, to support all the arts for all of us, they were able to say yes. So when I joined, um, it was it was just an incredibly, and it still is, um, vibrant, thriving beehive of a place. He said, we've done some programming over there. We do several hundred events a year. Um, not always ours, sometimes we're a co-host, sometimes we are the venue for something that someone else brings to us. Lots of nonprofits have their events here, but we generate a lot too, and over 80 exhibits a year and lots of classes. We were just busting out of the place, it just every, everything we tried to do, we were juggling all kinds of things that overlapped. And so this place is gonna allow us to expand in all kinds of great ways. And let's talk about this place. We'll, we'll first talk about Bob's owl pen because mm -hmm. this used to be, this is a building that was right behind the cultural center known as the Owl Club. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Uh, the Owl Club was a club that was uh, started by the merchants and sea captains here in the Bass River Village. And um, they, you know, did all kinds of great things um, beyond playing poker and pool and staying out till all hours of the night. For. And that's how they got their name. It was the wives that oh. called it the Owl Club. And in any case, uh, they were a philanthropic organization, and we hope uh, to reincarnate that uh, that mission of theirs to. Uh, to support the community in any way we can. And the Owl Pin came about when uh, we were looking at uh, different <clears throat> uh, words that depict groups of any type of animal, like a gaggle of geese or a flock of this. Uh, well, it's, in terms of owls, it's a parliament of owls. So we started a club you give at a certain level uh, to the Cultural Center, and you get your owl pin made by Carol Johnson, local artist, and um, you become a member. And we're proud uh, to say right now we have about 60. That's remarkable. Yeah. That's remarkable. And we talked about that fundraising is a big part of this, that you, once this wing is open, we know it will be busting at the seams and we'll be talking, we'll have another video where we're talking about a new addition. But um, Our dream is to have a campus to <laughs> have all kinds of buildings. Yeah. Absolutely. So you've been doing a tremendous amount of fundraising to get this wing up and running and it's um, almost ready to open. Um, it's so exciting. We've taken the tour. You're going to tell us a little bit about the rooms that we've seen and um, it's it's remarkable. So fundraising is a big key to that. Well, one of that. the things we're most proud of is that just as we react to the community in terms of programming and events here, we also have had the support of the community from the $2 donation, and there have been plenty of those, to the um, Community Preservation Committee in Yarmouth, which has been very generous with us because they understand 
understand that you know that there's historic preservation, there's all kinds of enhancement of, of community life, and so they've been very supportive, but so has the state, the Cultural Facilities Fund of the Mass Cultural Council, and many other foundations here on the Cape, and many individuals who belong to the Parliament of Owls, and, and, and lots of people who just, you know, they come and they say, I really can't afford to give much, but here, this is what I can afford. And we'd rather have a broad base of that sort of support than just a few big donors. Uh, it, it means that, that we reflect community need and the community recognizes that and in, turns, uh, in turn supports us. Absolutely, and there's a huge community need for that education. And uh, whether it's pottery classes, um, dancing, theater, music, recording studio, and having those affordable opportunities here to uh, share in all of those arts. And we're actually standing right now in what will be the kitchen. So why don't we start there with our tour as far as what this room is about. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, um, in 2009, I believe, we did uh, a survey to 1,700 school kids. And we gave them a long list of artistic disciplines that they could check off if they had an interest in it. And the number one was cooking. And then from there, recording, which is something else we're gonna be doing. We'll have a recording studio in the basement. But the kitchen here will serve uh, many, many uh, different populations. Uh, there are so many people that are just very interested in taking cooking classes, healthy eating. Uh, we hope that Born out of this, we can start a program for youth that want to stay here on the Cape. Uh, they'll be able to learn uh, food prep, uh, restaurant management, and uh, food service because we're hoping for possibly a little cafe. Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll eat my lunch here every day. Yes. No, it'll, it'll be seasonal, and you saw the beautiful patio out there, so uh, we hope to put little bistro tables out there and have the kids making the food, serving That's it. Right, learning all about that. Yeah, yep. marketing Expect to all of it. The opportunities again, and so let's let's talk about that. The, their number one was culinary, and number two was recording studio. Actually, one more thing about culinary is that we're going to be part of the culinary. Um, Incubator, incubator Network, right. which, you know, for entrepreneurs on the Cape who have products they want to sell, say, at Whole Foods or whatever, this will be a place where they can develop their products. So we consider this to be part of an economic engine. It's not only tourism, but it's local, the local economy and entrepreneurship. But recording, that, that applies to that as well. A lot of young people are budding musicians who could conceivably make a living by being performers, but they do not have access to affordable recording studios. And so we hope to provide that for them, and in addition to um, services for professional musicians who need a, a local place to go, and spoken word artists as well, poets and others who want to record their work. You also have room studio space coming for um, fiber arts, mixed media. Mm -hmm. We talked about that, the kilns, the ceramics. Um, let's talk about the studios upstairs that you're renting, you have plans to rent. And it's not just, it's affordable studio space, but also teaching is involved. Mm -hmm. The uh, studios upstairs, there's actually five studios. One we're designating uh, as a mentor uh, student studio. So that will be free. Right now we have a program called Rise and Shine where we match mentors with students and currently they come into the building and it's kind of cumbersome. They have to get out in the basement, drag out some art supplies and do a little project and then put it all away. Well this studio will have everything at their fingertips and they can have ongoing projects. So we're really looking forward to that. The other four studios will be rented to local artists. The criteria to have a studio, you have to teach. And they'll be able to teach in their class, or they'll be able to come down into the large hall, which will be dividable, so it can be two, two large studios, or it can be one big studio. I just wanted to say, too, that we just learned that the Cape Cod Five Foundation will be supporting that mentoring studio, as others are as well. But the, the um, Cape Cod Five Foundation has been very supportive of our work with at-risk youth. And uh, this is going to enable us to 
kind of forego the revenue stream that that studio would have been and give it free to people who could not afford that space otherwise. So especially young people, we're very, very pleased about that. And I think that's the running theme here is that, again, it's a community space. It's mm -hmm. open and certainly you have to take in money to, to sustain sure. and to support, but that you really have a, a very nice balance where the recording studio will be much more affordable. It's about collaborations, collaborating with uh, C3 TV, mm -hmm. I believe, Cape mm -hmm. Media, mm -hmm. um, to make that possible. These generous uh, benefactors that, that provide the funds so that then you can provide these opportunities. It's, mm -hmm. it's um, absolutely beautiful. Yeah. So let's talk about what else that we've seen on our tour. We went to where there is a teaching and stage area. Mm -hmm. Yes, we'll be able to have small performances in the large room here. As you said, doubles as a classroom at, at times. Uh, we'll be able to have dance classes, all kinds of things that are difficult to hold elsewhere. Um, and so we envision coffee houses and small concerts. We'll still use the performance hall in the main building for larger events, but this will be a nice, cozy alternative to that. And um, uh, virtually anything could happen in there during the days, all kinds of educational opportunities. And um, we'll just wait to see what happens. Sure. And you also have a beautiful area that can sit once the cafe. <laughs> you can have your True. cappuccino out in the True. garden. Absolutely. With some performance area space out there. Mm -hmm. And then the connector. Let's just um, give a shout out to Jean Marie Eau Claire from Bass oh, River yeah. Pottery, who uh, has been involved in the High Arts Campus mm -hmm. uh, and also here at the, at the Cultural Center. And she created a stunning floor mural. Yeah, she volunteered to do that. Mosaic. Mosaic, thank yeah. you. I knew mural was not the right word. <laughs> she really wanted to be part of this. She, she's, she's been supportive all along and uh, she's, she can't wait to teach when we have the ceramic art studio open, which will be soon, we hope. Um, but she created this beautiful mosaic to, to edge the connector leading into the main building. And it's, it's a learning experience for her too. She hasn't done anything quite like it before. We are the very happy beneficiary of her generosity. Absolutely, and how appropriate for an educational wing. It's yes. a learning process Absolutely. for her all the way around. Well, one thing I would like to say about the artists and you know, people like Jean Marie and, and all the other artists that will come through our doors, as you walk around, you'll notice a lot of white wall space. Well, we hope, we're not gonna do rotating exhibits like we do. Uh, in, the, in the other galleries, but what we will do is allow the artists to hang their work. So in short order, this is gonna be just a beautiful place to come and, and view art that's created here. The teachers, the people, the studios, and we'll have monthly open studios so people can come in and see the, the artists at work and buy their artwork and, and uh, get to know them. So the, uh, we're looking forward to that. And yeah, they'll coincide with uh, the opening receptions we're doing currently. Whenever there's an opening reception, we put the sign out, please visit the artist studios, we'll have some music over here, and uh, just make it a real fun thing that people can come. And I think you do that kind of stuff now at, at High Arts, right? Absolutely, yeah. right in High Arts and Barstool Village and the other areas, and this itself, as you say, is a whole, becoming a whole campus, arts campus as well. So it's very, very exciting for, um, for everyone here. Let's let our viewers know for certain um, how they can get involved, how they can find more information. Certainly donations are welcome to help complete Always. what you need to do. It's it's just already I can feel the excitement um, and it's not even open yet. So. Sure, we're open seven days a week, almost around the clock, I mean around the, the calendar. Um, we take a little time off, but anyone's welcome to stop in and see us to talk about the opportunities here and how they can get involved. We also have a website, um, cultural-center.org, uh, where they can go and find out more about our programs and ways to support us. Uh, there are lots of ways to support an organization like ours. It's, money's always lovely, but there's time, talent, and treasure, and we're open to any possibility, so just need to come see us. And people do literally walk in the door. And uh, one thing about anybody here that's on staff, we take the time to listen to everybody that comes in because you never know. And consequently, uh, we've had some incredible exhibits. We've had uh, incredible performances, people that just showed up, you know, so. Yeah, well, our aim is to achieve a balance of emerging and established artists in all media. And um, we've managed to do that so far. We consider it, you know, a rising tide lifts all boats. So people who are just starting out need the encouragement of being in the company of more established artists who seem to really um, appreciate the chance to be uh, mentors and inspiration to younger people who are just learning. 
Very nice. Well, you both are an inspiration to me and to our arts community at large. Thank you so much for your time. This is so exciting for Lauren Walk. Bob Nash at the Cultural Center of Cape Cod and the new educational wing on Melissa Chartrand. <laughs>